call this meeting of the Planning Board Conference and Planning Committee to order, today being March 7th at 7.04 p.m. We have two items on the agenda to discuss today. The first one is looking at uh, an overlay district, which we never really settled on the last time. And then the second one is more of the, the family farm, hobby farm, uh, non-commercial activity. Sorry. And we don't, we don't have any minutes from the last meeting, do we? No. Nope. Okay. We don't. So we will table any discussion about this. Did you approve or not approve the ones from the previous? Yes. Yes, yes approve. Okay. Okay. So the first item on the agenda is this discussion of an overlay district. And what I'd like to do is find out from each one of you how you feel about it. If you think it's a good idea or you, would, you think it's a bad idea. So that it gives us a direction in, in terms of how to proceed from a commercial point of view. Because the, the overlay district would only apply to commercial animal husbandry, not to uh, home animal. Well, I, I guess it depends on, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking commercial, at the same time I'm thinking like the uh, the alpaca farm is commercial, mm -hmm. but it's a smaller scale than like a dairy farm that might be 200 head of cattle, so. But th this, you, you have I, to remember, this is going to impact only new animal husbandry. Well, that, that right, but what I'm carbon. thinking of, she's in the R1 district. Correct. And she, but she has the acreage supported as, as opposed, and so I'm just wondering, do we really want to overlay just certain areas where these can be, or do we tie them into the amount of acreage that we had talked about? That's, that's my question. I would. Well, did you, did anybody bring their overlay district from last time? Yes. It was tied to acreage. It was, it was tied to a minimum of 10 acres. Minimum of 10 acres. Okay. If you don't have it, I think I somewhere in this sea of paper. I don't know if you have it. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay, yeah. I'm going to ask a question about the table. We haven't, I haven't even looked at so it. So what do we, I guess when I think of overlay, I'm thinking of like mobile home overlay area. Yep. It's, like it's, that. It, it's something yeah. similar to that. Why yeah. do we, why don't, if we're tying it to a minimum 10 acre loss, I, I guess I, I don't see the need for an overlay, I, I, is my question. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that's the way I see it too. If we yeah. rather have overlay yeah. just say it's allowed in that zone and then have, have some, some uh, standard zone, uh, setback and acreage and things like that. Well, that's, that's, the whole, that's the whole purpose of this discussion. Which way are we going to go? Are we going to have an overlay or not? I think overlay and, might, and might complicate things. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Overlay districts are, they are what it says. You overlay uh, uh, it's over a phase zone yep. uh, to either further regulate or incentivize certain activities you, you want. Like right? mm -hmm. you got historic overlay zones and you want to preserve a historic district. But I don't know why you would have where, where are the overlays going to be? You know, every ten acre lot's going to be an overlay? That's wherever, ridiculous. Well, it would be wherever wherever anybody wants one. I mean it would be if you mean What do you raise your hand and say I want to be an overlay I want an overlay? What do you mean? You gotta identify it. Yeah, well, we, we would identify on the map, but it would be a floating zone. It would be a zone based on, on the use, and they would meet these, they have to meet these standards. They could do things that they couldn't do before. Why, why do you need that? Why can't you just have standards for a commercial farm? Right now, I'm going to I'm gonna have to put them in every single district, then. Right now, we, 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 have, we, or not? we have a couple of types of overlays. One is the, is the, uh, the trail park overlays, and, and that very specific. It's, uh, there's only one area where it's overlaid in the whole town. The other is uh, south town overlays. And that's just shoreline. 
Yeah. Shoreland is, yeah. not, is another one that which. But yeah. check, that's, but that's where the condition very, exists. That's right. what drawing yeah. is. That's so where that, the condition that, exists. That's a, um, because of the conditions. Right. But the other overlays were created because there was one place where that cell right. tower would work, and, and that that's where we put it. And we call it an overlay just because we, we didn't want to say it's allowed in R2, which is where it might be, because then it spread elsewhere, which maybe we didn't want. With the um, with these with the livestock, the overlay, we, we're not looking to restrict it to one one specific area. We're looking, if they have the acreage that can <coughs> meet all the other conditions, then, then it can be anywhere within whatever zone we want. Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. How are you going to, how are you going to regulate? How are you, how are you going to establish that? Who's going to establish that? Same way we, with the shoreland. Well, it's that shoreland, anything in the shoreland zone is a conditional use. Agricultural, agricultural demonstration project facilities are also conditional uses. I don't want to make agri animal husbandry a conditional use. I would prefer not to do that. I mean, we can do that, make it that, yeah. but would this be a way to avoid making it conditional? This is one way. I mean, this is why we came up with it. So if you meet these conditions, you can have a district here performing. Yeah. And when you designate as such, and it gives you certain things that you can't do, you know, in that district, I mean, it gives you some, one of the things we were talking about, and you probably remember, is agritourism issue, including lodging, including veterinary facilities, including even retail. And, and that's, that's one of the advantages, that would be one of the advantages of having a, a, a district, or some sort of designation <coughs> for it. Now, if we could do that without having a district, that's fine with me. But I'm trying, but the best vehicle we have for that right now is conditional use, so I'm not sure if we want to make that conditional use. you're talking about conditions in the overlay. Right. Conditions, conditions. I, I'm understood, but it's a conditional use. So, it, well, if we make it a conditional use, then, then this would, overlay would just become another conditional use section, right? I, I agree with Tom. I, I don't see any point in making it complicated. I see no point in an overlay district. You know, set the minimum acreage for the appropriate district, and then you put in whatever controls you want to make it work in that district with that acreage. Whether it's called it an overlay or not, if, if they have the acreage, they meet the standards, it's allowed, mm -hmm. whether you call it an overlay or not. Okay, but if we if we make it a conditional use, then it's going to have to go to the planning board, right? I, I but guess this is we're talking I guess commercial. Yeah, 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 just commercial. Yeah, that's all we're talking about. But, but why would it would it would not have to if it was in the it was considered an overlay? I, I guess I don't understand the double standard. Just because we put the word overlay, it, they don't have to apply to the planning board to a commercial business. I I, I guess I don't. I, maybe I just don't understand. What you do it either way. I just, I just thought this might be neater. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't understand. And, and I, I spent a little bit of time with the document that you gave us, and I have a lot of problems with that. Well, that would be changed okay. to a conditional use performance standard. What do you think? That I still have a lot of problems. No, I'm a, I'm, I mean, I don't have a strong feeling, but, you know, whatever way seems to make the most most sense to, to keep it straightforward and not have to, you know, not not have to just overcomplicate our ordinance any more than it already is. Okay. And, John? Yeah, and I agree. If, if they we're talking just commercial farming, mm -hmm. conditional use, planning board, I don't think that's going to be any one obstacle, right? I, I just, I wanted an idea. Because we we need to move forward on this and quit beating it to death. And if we're not if we're not going to do the overlay, that's fine. We don't do the overlay. Right. And we we can put it. We can we can create the criteria. We can say you've got to have a minimum of ten acres or a minimum of twenty acres, and you've got to have all of this kind of setback. The one thing that I that I'm hoping that you all would agree with is that they're subject to the Department of Agriculture regulations. I don't want to write those regulations. No. No. I don't want to run down that, that rabbit trail. Now, is the is the proposal, if they adhere to that, then they 
sort of by default are given a, a permit and not have to come before the planning board, like, you know, a la conditional use? No, I would think they'd still, they'd still have to come for the conditional use because we're gonna, they're going to have to prove that they have the setbacks and that they're meeting all of the, requir the other requirements. They won't, the town of Arundel's requirements will not be as great as they would be if we did not turn the, that enforcement over to the Department of Agriculture. If we turn it over to the Department of Agriculture, if we don't turn it over to the Department of Agriculture, we're going to have to start regulating setbacks from for the manure piles from wells and from streams. Let the Department of Ag, they know, and, yep. and, if, and we say use best practices according to them, that's going to be a whole lot easier than our trying to regulate it. So would, would any new commercial farming operation ultimately, from what I'm hearing, would have to come before the planning board? They'd come before the planning board. Still have to define what a commercial it means. Or, um, how do we do that? Well, it, that's acreage based, or at least that would be my thought on it. Would be it would be based on the, on the number of acres and you know, what what is it that you're doing? Well, wouldn't I mean anything that was <coughs> large enough not to fall into the family farm? Correct. Which, uh, which would assuming we, assuming we finalize that language. As it's written now, anything over fifteen thousand dollars net, and with more than one employee. Well, I am too, but I'm saying as it's written in the proposal now. If, if we have whatever the, whatever the maximum is for the family farm, anything that exceeds that automatically becomes commercial. Yes, by and, and, that, and that that was where we were going with the overlay zone. We were saying that if it's ten acres or more. It's commercial, regardless. If you've got 10 acres or more, you've got a commercial operation. Yeah. Well, that's silly. Well, that's not yeah. true. Well, no, that, that, that's that, was the, that was the kickoff point that we started with. We can change it from there. We can make other requirements. I don't think dollar value makes any sense because who's going to enforce dollar value? Would it be the amount of life, life it could The acreage, right? If I had 10 acres, I could have chickens. Right, chickens. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I'm not going to argue that point. I was simply saying that when we first started off, that's what we were looking for. It's 10 acres and it became a commercial operation. We can modify it to any point we want from there. But if, if I understand the consensus around the table, we're not going to do the farm overlap, which is fine. A lot of language in there is, is can be incorporated. But to, not to have another district. Well, it's a performance thing. Yeah. yeah. So this turns into a performance thing. It's a judicial use now. So is this, is, are we talking about this in, in any zoning district? That's or, the question. The farm over. I know we've, we initially the started the conversation in the R1, right? Right, and if, if we're going to allow farm, if we're not going to do the farm overlay and we're going to allow farms, are we going to allow them in the other one? I think a lot of what I've been hearing is sentiment that is if it's 10 acres in the R1 or R4, it doesn't matter because they, they'll be able to have enough <coughs> buffer and enough acreage to, to not be a nuisance to the neighbors. Right. That's, the, that's the discussion and the, the decision we'll have to make about commercial farms. Is, is 10 acres enough? Is it not enough? Do we want them in the R1? Because if, if it were an overlay district, we'd look at it and say, well, is it allowed in the R1? Is it not allowed in the R1? But if we're going to talk about commercial farms, are they allowed in the R1 or are they not allowed in the R1? Regardless of the acreage that we set on, do we want to allow commercial farms in the R1? Yes. And we've said yes. Yes. I, I agree. We just I want to sure I want to tie it all out and get it memorialized yeah. in minutes oh. so mm -hmm. that when we get oh, yeah. the discussion, yeah. we don't have to beat it to death again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was Mr. Redway's purpose in proposing the overlay district to avoid the process 
of a conditional use permit. Okay. Let, let, me, let me clarify this. This was not Tad's suggestion. This was mine. Okay. That we that we do an overlay simply because I thought the overlay would be easier from a regulatory point of view because now we, we would have the Department of Ag doing it. Regardless of, of, of the idea, I, I, I got the impression from comments Tad made maybe 10 minutes ago that sounded like he was proposing that it not be a conditional use if it met the criteria for Berkeley district or permitted use, whatever whatever you want to call it. And, and my, did I hear, hear that correctly or not? Yeah, it would be something where the planning board would designate it as a, as a animal husbandry oper commercial animal husbandry operation. They would look at the very simple, you know, the, very, the simplest stuff that meets these, these criteria and therefore we designate it as a commercial farm area. Yeah. That was that would be the planning board's role. Wouldn't go through a plan. It wouldn't go through the usual conditional use process. Which I was trying to avoid. That help? That sounds good. So that if that can be done with the overlay district, that sounds appealing to me. So well, but the, 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 the rest of the folks up here seem to think that we can do that without the overlay by addressing it within. But these are the standards and the parameters that it has to meet. And then, we, then yes, it, would be, yes. it would just be a permitted use provided you meet these criteria. Right. And you, but you'd have to come to the planning board and show that you meet those criteria. So now you're saying that the operation in this zone, this is where it's going to be. You'd show us on the map what the acreage is going to look like. You'd, you'd show us that you can meet the setback requirements. And but what formal, form, you know, formal things do I have to do? So I can't just walk into a planning board meeting and just no, say... No, you'd have to submit the, the, to get put on the agenda to tell us about it. Without filling out a whole application? There would be, there would be an application. Yeah, yeah, an you have to have. Right. You know, I can, yeah, I guess I, what I'm worried about is I don't want to put it so that, you know, if somebody wants to start a commercial application, it could be a smaller commercial application than a big dairy farm, but, you know, you don't want to have them to go through surveys and architects and, and all of this just if they're going to do a small commercial application. Right. If it's the difference between an overlay and, and conditional. Uh, a conditional, you know, a condition in the, the zone, you know. So, so that was the overlay. So now I'm a farmer and I I just, I'm, I'm going for an application because I meet the set standards and I'm just living um, for conditional use. What would my process be and I wanted to open up a... Well, my thought would, would be that it would be the same process. Because it's, because if we're talking about allowing it in the zone, it's simply a matter of coming and saying, here's, the, here's what I have to do. I've done it. Here's the map that shows. So I guess in conclusion, it's really no different. It would not a hard be. process. Well, we have to have some waiver. We have to have yeah. a different application for it. I mean, yeah. you just we just have to make it simple. You have to make it simple. You have to make it simple. Standards are simple, that's all. Yeah. I, I, I have a question that's maybe going to make this worse. And I'd like to restrict this just to R1 for a moment. 
if, if we made the decision tonight that commercial farms are allowed in R1 with X number of restrictions with regards to acreage and setback and all that, doesn't that basically make them a permitted use in R1? Yes. I agree. So it's not conditional. Um, it's conditional in that you have to have, get an approval by the planning. Right, right. it is conditional. You, you just can't open up shop. Yeah. If permitted you, she can open up shop. Right, well, that, that was what I wanted to but, clarify. Okay, right. that answers my question. And, and I think one of the reasons so, that we want to do that, uh, maybe, not, maybe not in the R4 or the R3, but definitely in the R1, is because we want your neighbors to know that this is coming in there. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to have an impact on the neighborhood. Well, I, I think it's equally important in all the districts. I mean, R2 and R3, you know, if you've got a commercial operation coming next to you, it, it, you know, it's, I think it's appropriate. Okay. But I don't want to, you know, <coughs> make it... Onerous, <laughs> doable. You know, it's like, yeah. Is there you know? is there the potential to have sort of a, a, a quasi permitted use in that you you may need to notify the town, you know, that you that you're going to adhere to these standards, but not go through a full, you know, planning board process. For an approval, that would be up to the planning board. We could, we could work something up along those lines. We have a different, we have a different application form for the short and zoning than we do for for conditional uses. It could be a different application. Yeah, we could we could have an application for commercial animal husbandry and just and simplify the application they, because they're not going to have to be requesting. All of the conditional uses that, that are on right. the current application. We can right. take that out and just use the first page or the second page. And, and if I could emphasize again, right now, commercial animal husbandry is not permitted in the residential district. It's just not. Right. For all intents and purposes, you get 5,000 animal, you get five animal units, you get 5,000 pounds of animal, which means you cannot have a real commercial animal husbandry operation in any residential district. We're over the where that opportunity doesn't exist now and we're making it so that if you meet these conditions, you can do it. You've got enough acreage, you can meet the setbacks, you're not going to be impacting your neighbors with your wetlands or whatever. This gives you an opportunity. We have a situation where we have an existing farm or a new farm that's, that's, that is going in and is being resurrected, if you will, and right now they can't operate. And this is not necessarily to help them alone, but to help anybody who wants to be able to do that, because one of the things the town planning committee has mentioned, this town has consistently mentioned over and over again, is a desire to preserve agri agriculture and in, in this town, because of its heritage, and because it is of value to the townspeople. Right now, our ordinance doesn't allow that to occur, and this will allow, allow it to occur. So, we're meeting a, a, a goal here by doing this, issue is now just the details and not make this work without causing undue impacts to either any part. But there needs to be an opportunity for the butters to appear and vote yeah, right. and they don't exactly. want to make it onerous, but and you have to have some sort of hearing process. Right, and that, that's why we're coming to the right point. Right. Right. I, I guess I would have agree to that in, say, the R1, R2, whatever is left of the R3. I, I, think I struggle with that a little more in the R4. Well, I, I don't think the R4 should be included in this discussion at all. It's, it's, okay. it's rural conservation. And that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's not that's a, a residential right. district. And that was one of the problems I had with this document, is that it's included here, and I don't think it should be, particularly at this stage. You know, we may yeah. need to discuss that later, but we're talking residential districts now, and that's not R4. So would that mean that they, they don't have to follow the best management practices and comply with the Department of Agriculture? No, on the commercial activity, absolutely not. All we're doing is simplifying the process that they're notifying us so that we can tell the neighbors that this is what's going on. If we decide that they, you have to meet best practices, then you still have to meet best practices of whatever the Department of Ag says they are. 
that's the reason. And that simply makes it easier for us to create that, that commercial activity. So if, if it's important enough to, for the R1, 2, and 3, wouldn't it also be important enough in the R4? It's a, it, it, but, but Don is making the, the point that, that it, R4 is not a residential zone. It's rural conservation. We can address that when we get to there. If, if there's too much runoff. Oh, that piece, would, that yeah. piece would stay. That's not a problem. But I mean, this, this addresses you know minimum acreage and setbacks and everything for the rural conservation zone. And my suggestion is that we leave that alone now. We're talking residential districts where you have more closely packed houses and you have more, you have a different level and uh, list of concerns, perhaps, with regards to the neighbors. The only problem with this is, though, and, and I understand what you're saying, the only problem is if this becomes a conditional use and, and we, I mean, these are the standards for any kind of animal husbandry operation, and it's going to be conditional use in the arts in the rural conservation district, and it's got to be in. It's got to have, it can't go back later. Either that or it's not going to be regulated at all in the RC. And the question is, are you suggesting there will be no regulation of animal husbandry operations in the RC? Since I don't know what the regulations are going to be yet, I can't answer that question. All right, well, just based on this, let's say. Oh, based on this, I, I, I have major problems with this. Um, I, um, what, my major problem starts with the title. Commercial animal husbandry, well, it's now conditional use. Yep. And the first permitted use is cultivation of rowing field crops excluding marijuana. That's not animal husbandry. Sure. So this, this is a mixture of okay. agriculture and animal well, husbandry. Remember, this was when it was a district. This is, some of this stuff will go bye by. Well, I, I, <laughs> okay. hence my problems. A I know, of, but you can't give us something. A, a lot of this stuff needs to, to go, go by bye bye because we're looking or at be redone. You just well, made that right. decision tonight. Right. You, I mean, you just made that decision tonight, so this will change now because we made that decision. Can you go through that, that list that you have of uses? Can I ask a point of clarification? Yeah. yeah. The, you're talking about animal husbandry. Right. So if you are not doing animal cultivation of any kind, you're talking about strictly crops? Exactly. Not going to regulate it. Yeah. You want to run a farm, a, a, an agricultural operation? Go ahead. Right. We're, we're looking more from the animal husbandry point of view because that has the bigger impact. Right. I don't, I guess I disagree. I disagree too because you can have a large commercial agricultural issue like the, 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 the corn mazes and stuff like that. Those are pesticides and then yeah, pesticides, and runoff. Um, um, you know, maybe it should be the animal husbandry and then agricultural, but I don't know. But um, yeah, you, you can get a lot of pesticides. I think, how, how, about, how about this? If we tackle that next, right. Right. We, yeah, we, we can do that one now. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 that, that just set because too broad. But I know that the, the original discussion we had, we were not going to be looking at agriculture. Yeah. Yeah. We were looking strictly at animal husbandry. Because the issue has always been that we separate in this town animal husbandry from agriculture. Yeah. And animal husbandry is strictly limited in the residential districts, and it's that's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You almost read it. Almost did. Oh, close so one. <laughs> 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 I just lost my hand. <laughs> 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 we need, we need yeah, to separate the two out. Because there are completely different standards for both sides of that one that we would want to look at. Yes, Mark. Is everything before this meeting grandfathered? Everything before it gets voted on at town meeting is grandfathered. We're not. We're going to make a proposal for town meeting. If the town meeting passes it, then if you're in existence beforehand, you're grandfathered. If you're not in existence, you become new, which means you'll be subject to the regulation. Well, in, in Mark's case, I mean, he's, he's new. Uh, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> only, only because you're expanding your what you have there. You're going to want it more, more, more animals. That's why, kind of why we're doing this. Right? Oh, thank you. Um, so, yeah, you, you would go through this just, you, just like you did the last time when you, went, when, when you had those. We don't wait for supper. Yeah, the 5,000. We yeah. don't wait for supper. Yeah. And, and it's a conditional use in all the And on this, I don't understand in the rural conservation area why you would make the minimum parcel size 15 acres. 
And that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, they should all be the same. They should all be the same. Well, let, let's go back and look at the residential. Yeah. Are 10, is 10 acres sufficient? Or do you think it should be more? Well, where, where are the property owners think? Just as, as a farmer, looking at trends within the farming community, there are definitely, and also looking at what's available for farmland that's within a price range of a lot of young farmers, um, people can make a living on like a five acre field. So I don't know that, you know, a, a 10 acre minimum, um, which is for animals. Well, but then there was also discussion about... Yeah, no, this is exclusively animals. Yeah. We will deal with agriculture and crops next year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> next year, is that what... <laughs> but, but there are operations, I'm thinking of fifth down, I'm thinking of three operations that grow broilers, that grow turkeys right. as part of their operation, and they're, they're on like, you know, less than a take of a tenant of parcels. So I, I'm just pointing out that there are, you know, Plenty of examples of smaller farm operations that are, you know, have employees and are doing quite well on smaller parcels that, that also do animal mm. production. So, should factor that in. Yeah, I think part of our uh, the issue is balancing how <coughs> how small of, of a lot can it be right. without impacting the, the neighborhood. It's really hard to find. Yeah, but even balance. five acres, that's pretty good size. I, I think yeah. one of the things that we're hung up on here is is a very limited view of what animal husbandry is. It's not always a dairy farm. And it's not always a you know a large scale chicken farm. I mean the point you just brought up is an excellent one. I, and I've brought up a couple times the fact that you can raise a large number of animals in a barn. And if you put that barn in the, you know, someplace on five acres, your neighbors will not know what you're doing, assuming they are smaller animals. Um, you know, rabbits, chickens, turkeys, etc. So well, I think, I think, I and I, I had made this suggestion after the last meeting, I, I sent Tad and, and Rich an email, that perhaps we need, if we're going to do this at all, split our thinking into two sections. One is pa larger pastured animals. And then another set of restriction standards, what have you, for smaller housed animals. Is that just that you, did you write that? On the uh, yes, Tad handed that. I, I have yeah. since amended that, so yeah. that's not yeah. necessarily yeah. chapter and verse, but that was what I was getting that. at. Yeah. Um, why all, those, all that data I gave to you is because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at what standards there are. Yeah. For what's, what's essentially called an industrialized animal husband. It's not industrialized because that you don't cross that threshold with USDA until you get to twenty five thousand population. But they consider dairy farms and, and with over five fifty head, I believe it is. And and what it is is you are intensive you are intensely farming within a small confined space, and which raises its own questions about you know, manure management and smell management and, and all those other things. Whereas pasturing, which a lot of family farm people would do. <coughs> Is, is where you're letting them basically uh, free range in that pasture area, rotating pastures, um, and, and it's of sufficient size so that the, the nutrients from the manure and from the urine basically can get absorbed by the, by the ground and the, and the vegetative cover. Mm -hmm. When you get into the, the intensive, that's when you know, you're going to need a little bit more, more of a, a managed plan on how you're going to do it, deal with it. How do we, how do we uh, regulate that? Uh, the standards for it. That's it's it's been a challenge. Because we, could we um, m maybe it could be pastured versus housed, mm -hmm. um, and then it would be two different amounts of, of yeah, two two different tables. Two tables. Or, yeah. But then would there be an extra level of, of um, regulation just to make sure? Because we're still going to be more manure if it's ours, it'd be to, to deal with it. So well, yeah, that, that's where the, the state regulations would kick in. Okay. Good. I know USDA yeah. would, would take care of that in part. The other the other piece of it is when, all right, if, if I have a piece of property in R1 and I come to the planning board and I'm looking at a commercial operation and I have five acres, the first question is what kind of commercial operation do you have in mind? 
And when I explain that it's going to be a housed situation with X number of, I'll pick rabbits because I've done that, and this is how I'm going to handle the manure and so on and so forth, five acres might be fine for that. It would not be fine for a dairy farm. So that, that question gets answered, I would think, initially at the planning board level. But I think if we're trying to create an, a commercial animal husbandry, we cannot look at it and say, well, if you raise rabbits, you can have this much land. If you raise cows, you have to have that much. I think we need to say, this is the amount of land mm -hmm. that we want you, that you need to have, and all of the other conditions. If you want to house them, if the Department of Ag says that's okay, go ahead and house them. Because otherwise, we're going to end up back looking at something like this, which is what Wayne came up with the last time around, and it's going to just be a mess. And it's going to be very confusing. If we want to set something up, if we want to set something up, I think we need to pick an amount, an amount of land, be it five acres or ten acres or twenty acres. Pick an amount of land and say that's the the threshold for commercial activity. Just my opinion. Yes, ma'am. I'm thinking maybe you can make it a little simpler, where instead of saying you know minimum of ten acres, as long as you meet your setbacks and you follow the best management practices that the state has, you can do it. And it wouldn't matter what size your animals are because you obviously can't have 10 commercial cows on two acres, but you could have 200 rabbits in a barn. So instead of having two separate tables with all that extra detail, just keep it simple. In, in, in under my concept or my thought about it, we don't have those tables. We're not telling you whether they're pastured or whether they're housed, that's up to the Department of Agriculture and their best practices. Right. Let, let them nice. handle that aspect of how that's going to occur from, from a commercial point of view. I think we need to look at it and say, how much land, what kind of setbacks, what are we looking at from there? Maybe ask them, you know, how are you going to handle the waste management, but for the most part, that's Department of that Commercial activity is the Department of Agriculture's Purview. They should be dealing with that. That should not be something that we need to look at. Chip? I'd like to follow up on something Donna said, which is that the, the, the first row of this table seems kind of backwards in, in having a higher acreage requirement in, in the Rural Conservation District. The, the, the big concern is disturbing residential districts with animal husbandry. Maybe it should be 10 acres in the R1, but 5 acres in R2 and R3. I, I, I'm not saying that, I'm just throwing that out as a, a starting point. Um, but it, it, if, if the objective is to have a residential growth district where, you, where that's where you want residential growth, that animal husbandry on a five acre lot might be contrary to that. And whereas in, in the R3, maybe which is already, it's, it's two acre zoning, houses are further apart anyway, maybe five acres is okay. I kind of like to get away from the tables entirely, but if we have to have them, I don't see how we can not have to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and going just to, to argue with Rich, because I don't like to do it, <laughs> and he likes to have me do it, there is a difference between, hash, and, and I, my example of cows versus rabbits, I, it doesn't have to be that specific, but it is simply pastured versus housed. Oh, I, I agree, and, there is a, and, no question there's a difference. And therefore, these. if we if we set a minimum number of acres, I think that that should be reflected in those two different lists. You see, I, I, I was just looking at it saying, I agree that there was a difference between pastured and housed. I don't see why we need to go down that rabbit trail of saying, you know, based on, the, based on whether you want to house them or pasture them, this is the amount of land that you need. But if that's we, backwards. 
we're not, that, that's, that's not how it works. It's how much land do I have and what can I do with it? Well, that's and, and therein lies the problem because the land that I have is the land that I paid for. And I would like to do X. But Donna, you have always been an advocate for having 10 acres of land to do anything with. And I think 10 acres of land is a great spot to start. If, you're, if you've got 10 acres, you're commercial. If you've got less than 10 acres, then you're not commercial. But it's perfectly arbitrary. And if I have five acres and I can commercially raise a small animal in a building, it, but it is, I want to be allowed to do that. It is arbitrary for me to say you cannot have an autom automobile mechanic repair shop in your garage. It's arbitrary, but nonetheless, and any decision that anybody makes is an arbitrary decision because you're imposing a standard on somebody somehow. And it's, it's always going to be an arbitrary decision. Yes, but I think it's, it's our responsibility to the people of the town to make as few of those arbitrary decisions as possible. We're going to decide whether it's five acres with, with, with a very small group of, of clustered housing around it or 10 acres with a slightly larger group. I like the 10 acres. I think it's a, bit, it's a better deal. That's all. Okay. It might be a better deal if you're not the person that owns five acres. Or if you're, you have the ability to be able to do it according to state guidelines on a smaller size lot. Now, I don't know if we want to go, you know, you certainly don't want to go one acre. Well, why not? If we're, if, we're, if we're not going to go with a larger lot, why not go with one acre? Five acres is still... Five acres is not a lot of land. Not I've got land. six and a half. It's not a lot of land. But I think it all depends on what you want to do. You know, if, if you only want to raise a couple of things, or if you want to raise small animals, or if you just want to raise chicks, you know, there's, there's a, I think one of the reasons why we went back to the, to the state standards for commercial is because they have a set standard. If, if someone has five acres and they can meet that standard, that I don't think that we should stop them except for to say you have to have like this much of a setback or you know you can't be this close to you know their septic tank or their water or whatever it happens to be. Because those things are just common sense things. But I think that if they can meet the state standards for either animal husbandry or for agriculture and they meet those standards then I think that they, I'm sorry, they ought to be able to do it. And we have to find a way to make that work. I would agree with you in the, res, in the, in the rural conservation district. I think they should take this and it's there. But I, I get concerned about that in a one acre zone. And in here, you designated as a residential growth zone. And I am going to go back to what I said before. That one acre zone was literally shoved down our throats because we were told we had to have different zoning for, we had to have this because of this, and this because of this, and this because of this. The housing is not happening in the one acre zone. I know because it's happening in my neighborhood. So what we're doing is we are once again penalizing people who own property in that area because they got stuck in that zone. Just because we, as a town, decided to change that zone years ago doesn't mean that I'm going to sell my property. I already own it. And that's left people in a lich because they have the property to do it. But now because of this residential zone, they're not allowed to do it. And, and to be quite honest, residents can't live without animal husbandry or agriculture. So if we don't find a way to live with animal husbandry and agriculture, at some point, people are going to run out of food. Because I'm really not fond of buying some of this foreign stuff because it's getting a little touchy and a little dangerous. So. I prefer to buy my stuff local if I can get it. I prefer to grow my own stuff if I can do it. But I think as a town, we we can't just look at, oh, because it's a rural zone, or we can't just be zoned because it's 
is zoned as, as the residential area. Because this residential area has some pretty big sized chunks of land in it. So we need to get away from the residential and say, okay, how can we make the standards work so that it's fair and it protects everybody and there are some type of standards? That's what I want to look at. We can't. What? It's, it's impossible because any decision we make is going to be arbitrary. We have to Richard, follow the plan. Stop using the word arbitrary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a real dangerous <laughs> word. <laughs> okay. Okay. The record is bad. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. not okay. arbitrary. There's reasons behind this. There's a there rationale. Were. There was. Okay. Yeah. Yes. There, there are. I agree. You need to sweat oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> we don't want Tom sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so then, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Then we have to find the things that restrict this which is what we're trying to do right but we're we're looking at well, I'm not going to use the word we're looking at and and I'm just going to say it because I'm looking at an acreage size that to me I haven't been given a reason why this acreage size was picked because I know how much I can grow on a 35 by 50 garden. But we're not talking yeah. about agriculture. We're talking animal husbandry. But you know, so can, do not use the But it can, be, it can be the same thing. If you have a, if you have a 35 by 50 barn. You're not, living, you're not making your living off that 35 Can I make a suggestion? Can we go at this in, from the other direction? Why don't we look at all of the restrictions that would reasonably, reasonably be placed on this, except acreage first. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that, that. that might lead us logically to an acreage requirement. Yeah. We, we, we can do that without any trouble. For commercial Just animal commercial. husbandry. So animals only and on a commercial basis. And, and I, I don't know how the rest of you feel. I don't think we should address the kinds of animals. Be they rabbits, be they cows, be they pigs, be they uh, flying elephants. I, I don't think you only need one flying elephant. He's going to make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But if I have two, I can make them. That means a bigger fortune. I don't think we should be addressing the kinds of animals. No. Because we're talking about the animal husbandry. We need to look at what kind of setbacks are we looking looking at and how do we, we want to help protect things along those lines. And there are animal size. No specifications for animals. Okay. I'm, I just wanted to make that point. Okay, and so I, I think from this, what do you guys think is a good setback distance? <laughs> oh, you're going to go yeah, sit you in the corner. Put you in the corner so, by yourself. Oh, no, it's the comma. Because then he can't, he can't comment on my English usage. Let, let's start with the 25 foot setback. setback 50 feet from the road. In R1, the, the standard setbacks right now, right? 50 feet from the road for your, your house, mm -hmm. 25 rear and side setbacks. Okay. Which means that if your next, your, your abutting property also has 25 feet on the side and the rear, therefore you are 50 feet away from a dwelling. A minimum. minimum. Yeah. So if we start there, then the question is, does that need to be made bigger? Yeah, from a commercial point of view, definitely needs to be. Okay. How much bigger? And we're so I don't necessarily agree that it needs to be bigger. I mean, is a, is a pastured cow that much of a of a detriment to the neighborhood? So that's a pastured cow. Right. So it's a commercial. It's not a dairy cow. Yeah. It could be a flying cow. You know. Right. I mean, but it. Yeah, I mean, it could. Is that that big of a of a detriment to the neighborhood? That, that's the whole question. Well, right. And uh, the reason I would the reason I would go with a hundred is because I would want to make sure that it wasn't in the middle of that. Well, but no, but that that's that's a different criteria. Right. This, this is just this is just setback from a dwelling. From a dwelling. To, to 
So see, obviously, it's to set that one okay. property line. So when you well, bring well, up, uh, that's what I said, well, 25 what? feet from the property line, but because your neighbor also has a 25-foot setback, the closest you're going to be is 50 feet. So you're thinking from 75 feet from the property line, then, which would be 100 feet from the neighbor's from the building. Well, that was what that was what Diane said, not what I said. I started with 25. Uh, yeah, no, I, I she right. did say 100. I, I had said, you know, have a 100-foot setback as well. Let me, let me I think 50 is, sure is way too small because just one car lot, no one will have a problem. Is that a commercial? But no, it's commercial. It's those those commercial. cars aren't going to just regulate themselves not to, to get, you know, there probably will be 15 of them all with, on that on that spot at a time. That might be too much. So it, I, we can't control that. Can I, can I ask a simple question so that I understand what this means? When it says 50 feet, okay, that's, it doesn't mean that's your 50 feet. It means just plain 50 feet from the neighbor's house. That's what Yours this says. says. Okay. 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 I just want to make sure that Plus I'm clear. That's very right. important. That's very okay. important. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I understand. Okay. That, that's unusual that we, we don't mm. usually have that. Usually it's usually from the property line. The property line. Mm -hmm. So do we change it? To the property line instead of the well, I, I I was kind of hoping we could just get some numbers down. I mean, okay. th this <laughs> I really, I've been wanting to tear this up all day. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I need to read it. Well, so, so, so the all right. So from the property line, twenty five feet. You know, take this one piece at a time. Commercial operation. I think seventy five feet. I think, I yeah, I think seventy five feet would be a good spot from the property line. Because now you're going to be a hundred feet from the house. From yeah. the neighbor's house. This room is I'm probably sorry. about yes. 50 feet. You know, so <coughs> not all that it's big. It should be based on residential. I mean, it should be it should be based on that because I mean, yeah, it, yeah. you know, quite frankly, you're taking 75 feet out of a pasture area that's, that's a along lot. the road. That's a lot. It's a lot of land that's going out. Yeah. And that's going to turn in the brush. Were well, you yeah. talking setbacks from residential? I think they were thinking well, about houses. No, we just went and shifted the property line. That's why we said residential. That's why I said residential. Yeah. Car. Not property. And we kind of went over this before. That's, that's where yeah. some of these numbers came from. We went through this before. And when I think about it, it's, you're not worried about something next to your lawn necessarily. You're worried yes. more about something. Is that the system your house, house yeah. patio, that's what you're going to get. Where the manure pile is, you know, where the cows are, or worse, chickens, pigs. I have chickens on it. Bring my billy goat back. Okay. <laughs> chickens seems to be okay. Well, if it's 25 and 25, I'm probably fine with the 50 because we've got the uh, 25 on one, 25 on the other. You can't do anything within that 25 feet. That should give, I mean, that's a 50 foot buffer. Not really. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, you could have your patio right there, pool right, right there. Mm -hmm. Just well, wouldn't that be considered part of the residential? Or maybe not a pool, but uh, a, uh, a patio. You could have some place there that's where you have. So I think that's where Angel is, 75 feet from the property. See, I think 75 is a lot. I think if you're, if this room is mm -hmm. um, you get some 50, 50 feet. Mm -hmm. Again, that cuts off 50 that, feet. That, that, that takes a lot of land for pasturing along the road, for instance. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, this could be your side well, yard. Which is standard. But it's already 50 yeah. feet back from the... From the yes. Yeah, well, we are right. talking right. rich water. It's in the same one, though. No, we're talking just more than one. Well, well, right right now we're it would include our one. one. It would right. include our one, one. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not necessarily. We might change yeah, we could, the yeah, we could have a different standard in the okay. other zone. Yeah, I'm considering right, sure. this as a side yard setback because that we're talking about a budding structure. Correct. You wouldn't have anybody in the road in front of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, I'm thinking of budding yeah. side by side so well, side well, setbacks are. Yeah, maybe yeah. front setback can be far less. Maybe yeah. Maybe five feet for all I care. Right. Well, you keep out of the road. Yeah. Well, the, the front setback in the R1 is 50 feet. 50 feet right now. But that's, but that's for a building. building. Yeah. That's for a building. building. Right. right. Remember, these setback, setbacks were crude ways of designing neighborhoods, so they all look beautiful. That's why we had setbacks. That's that's how we, you know, 
is only set by him. You make sure buildings were in a certain line with each other. He created a streetscape. That's why they do their races. So when we think about setbacks, you know, we, we should change our, our, our concept about it and realize how this functions in terms of how the animals function in terms of their proximity to living areas and other budding residences and then the functionality of that of that space for, for pasture or for for uh, for any kind of use that happens. So. So to, to me this if if we say it's 75 feet from the abutting property line, well it's your house is good. I don't care about yeah, your house. Question, what, what are we talking about? What's 75 feet from there? The setback. So you what, have, uh, uh, right. Uh, setbacks uh, usually deal with structure. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. What's what are we setting back from? The roaming animal? I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The setback's supposed to be dealing with in this That's situation would be where your enclosure is, where your animals being kept. Whether it's being pastured, whether it's being uh, a house there. Yeah. If, yeah, if they're being it's pastured, being house, it's gonna term. need a setback. Yeah. If it's yeah. being housed, it's gonna be a structure that needs a setback. Yeah. It's a zoning setback. But if it's pasture, it's a different animal. That's for sure. We have no questions in the audience at this point. Yeah, Mark. I think if um, from day one it should be, if, if grandfather had his uh, fence line on the property line, there's no problem to this date. Grandfather should allow his cows to be there. If the bullock wants to at this point make a setback, that'd be fine. But if there's no problems before and people that were raising, who can afford to move their fences in 25 feet on? But we know, Mark, this you, you I, 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 I Please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not. But you keep going back as if we're trying to change what currently exists. We're not. We're talking about new agriculture, our new animal husbandry. We're not going to affect what is there right now. No, uh, but sure I think part of it is because he said that he would be treated as new. Mm -hmm. Do you know because, because he's expanding, he was expanding. out. Yeah. And and I have to say that I would have a problem if he's already raising animals there. He already has his fence line up. I would want to make somebody who's already raising animals to have to move their fence. Okay. And I think that was one of the discussions that we had had earlier is that if somebody already has existing fencing, it's already up. Right, we did talk about that. It, you it know, makes no I, sense to move Right. It. And so I, I think... You know, I don't want to be offensive to you. Oh, it's okay. I'm because, <laughs> because in, in one respect, he's really not new, but in another respect, he is new. But I, I think we have to be clear about how those circumstances get taken care of. It may not necessarily be part of this. It may be something that we may have to write in part of the grandfathering, whatever, that if the existing fence line is if there's already an existing fence line yeah, I think we and mean, I and I think that, that wouldn't that be something that the planning board would put into the yeah we'd have to put the word or, in or the old historic fence line not the old historic because I if we deal mean, with the old historic then we have to deal with the old historic on any piece of property that anybody wants to do something on and that would not be a problem yeah if it's if, because I have to tell you I have, I have old Indian. historic on mine if it's it's historic on it it's not usable. Uh, I, I think when I think the gentleman was from Harris Farms, the last time I was here, was talking about, it, it, it seems to me that you've got setbacks from different things. So, for example, if, if there is a well, and I don't care whether the well is on the farm property or on an abutting property, there needs to be a substantial setback from that for where animals are even allowed to pasture. That ought to be 50 or 75 feet. And any manure, composting, whatever, needs to be a lot further away from a well. That's all in the best management. Yeah, I, I, I thought so. But, but where I'm heading is, I, I, it, it seems to me that that when you're when you're talking about what what are we setting back, that if 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 I have ten acres, my neighbor has ten acres, and his house is on the opposite side of his ten acres, why can't I have my pasture, my new pasture, 
run right up to the property line. I don't I don't see why why that that is should be able to. So, yes, I think I, I think you should be able to. Yeah, now, should I be able to should I, okay, one, one, should, I, should I be able to build a commercial piglet I don't I don't know what the right term is, maybe Don piglet. can help me, but a a, 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 a a giant commercial pig pen, three stories or or whatever. Should I be able to do that 50 foot from my neighbor's property line? Hell no. But I, 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 I think you need to make a, a distinction between pasture or, or open area that, that maybe maybe there are chickens that are running around and, and you know, pre-range chickens. But that, that seems very different to me from a building or a composting facility or manure storage. And am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, 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 I do think for pasture purposes, maybe looking at, at the, not the property line, but at structures and I, I don't know what to call it, but a swimming pool, a patio, a uh, living area. Pardon? It would be a living area associated okay. with a home. Okay, because I, if, if I've got my pool that's right on my property line, I don't think someone should be able to move in and have, because cows do, as Tom pointed out, if, if, if the shady part of the pasture is right there next to the swimming pool, and it's 90 degrees, I can guarantee you all the belted galloways are going to be right there. Drinking the water. <laughs> Well, what if we looked at the setbacks from the standpoint of just buildings, regardless of whose it is? So, if, if, to your point, if if your neighbor's house is halfway across his 10-acre lot, then you can go right to the fence line with anything except a building. But, but if it's or, or, or not anything. Manure pile. No, no, no. That, that, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the animals Washington. themselves. Pasture, free range. Yeah. Pasturing animals, free range chickens, whatever. That can go right to the fence line. Probably if fine. your neighbor's building, Probably or if your neighbor's right. home and the associated parts, like his swimming pool, are closer to his fence line, then you need to take your that, that 50 foot gap that we're going to leave, or whatever that distance is, you need to back yours off as a new operation. Does that make sense? That's what I'm suggesting. Okay. That's exactly what I'm suggesting. But that does not make sense to me. Because now, you, well, because you have a double standard. Where is your neighbor located? So the guy whose neighbor is 25 feet away from the property line does not have the same freedom as the guy whose house is 150 feet away. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. He's, if at 25 feet, you've got to put up some kind of a buffer on your side of the line so that the animals don't cross over. At 150 feet, you don't. So? Yeah. It's a That's a standard. Well, yeah, on that first But I, I think we've got that, I'm sorry. No, uh, no, I'm just saying, the sheet that we have that says 9.3.5, family animal husbandry, we have in here that says, all pastures, barns, barnyards, and other areas where livestock or animals are kept, or provide care for whatever, shall be a minimum of 50 feet from the nearest dwelling, uh, and the hens or, or housing are containing in excess of three adult swine shall be at least 100 feet from the residential. And then it goes on to say, you know, like uh, infringing on uh, free for me and animals shall not be infringing on private ways in the public streets. And then we're talking about the water supply in there. So all of this is under this family, family. I don't agree with that either. So the previous conversation, I think there are inherent limitations in any property, whether it's 
commercial with one piece has a road frontage on Route 1 and one has very limited frontage on much of anything that's going to get them any traffic. Mm -hmm. I don't have too much of an issue if somebody is looking to put up a new type of operation that they've got to adhere to the limitations of the neighborhood because that's what they're looking to do this commercial operation in. Is a, I mean, we're specifically talking about a residential zone. So it needs to be sort of harmonious to the zone. And I think, I think that's, I'm not a big fan of off of existing things on other people's property. But I think, you know, when you're, when you're looking at sensitive type of, of uh, features such as a well or, you know, a, a living space, then, you know, I don't, I don't have as much issue with doing it off of something like that. And if somebody wants to move in and build it closer, then that's on, on them. It is on them, I agree. Could, could we, I'm just throwing this out there. Under the minimum setback, the minimum setback in this area is 25 feet, correct? For slide and rear, yes. Okay. So, if we did minimum setback of 25 feet from the abutting residential home or any part of such home, or 25 feet from the property line. Well, so your, your, okay. pro your property line would already have to be 25 feet from the existing home. Right. So that's why we'd need to make that number a little bit bigger. Okay. I think. Oh, so that's all you've got to. Yeah. Okay. But again, it depends upon whether you're setting uh, on the, the, the com on the commercial farm, what are you talking about that's going to be up against the property line? If it's pasture, then there's your fence and your, your neighbor is 25 or more feet away. You're covered. If you're going to put up a building, then you need to set that back 25 Just, feet because it's okay. a structure. Even if, it, you know, if, it's a, if it's a chicken coop, it has to be back 25 okay. feet. And so I, now you've got at least 50 feet when it comes to a building. Uh, but that's, that's the same standard that you would have on a residential. You couldn't put up a garage within that 25 foot buffer. Precisely. And I think from a commercial point of view, the standard has to be stricter. I agree. This is a commercial uh, use that we're talking about. And I, my house is probably right about 25 feet in the line. And if all of a sudden there were 30 cattle on that and they're right on my property line, I think it would bother me. In, in regardless of where the well was, just have that. Um, it, it, would, it would impact. I think my house would be less sell, sell, sellable, less valuable, just because if there were one or two or three, I have no problem with But a commercial activity right there, why don't we allow uh, auto body in this, in this neighborhood? Because it impacts all the, the, the residences. I think we have to be careful on making this too wide open for commercial use. So we do, do we do 50 feet from the property line? I don't know. Jim, what's 50 feet from the property line? A fence? Is that where we have to have a fence all the time? This doesn't what? specify for me, which is what makes it hard for me. It just says minimum setback from a budding home. But once we did, but it and says and agricultural uses and it says right. animal husbandry right. uses. Yeah. Well, well, a use could be a fence. It could be a fence of some kind. What are you talking about? Or a building? Well, look at it. It says minimum setback from a budding residential home. That's all I see. Yeah, and then underneath agricultural activities, it, we can get rid of that line there. You know, agricultural activities and animal husbandry activities. That's the way you subdivide. Well, so that, that doesn't even say what that means. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, 
mean, well, that, they have to say like, something. Do we have an extra line there that doesn't belong? <coughs> yeah, one yeah, that's no, right no. next to middle minimum setback for the budding properties. We take that yeah. out, and we have agricultural, and we have animal husbandry. Well, yeah, that's that's exactly exactly where you want this setback business. But, yeah. but to yeah. Tom's point, 50 feet. Okay, is it 50 feet from the property line? Even if it's 50 feet from the property line, which may or may not be a good idea, what are you going to do at that point? I think we have... Well, I you're either going to have a fence or a building. Right. You're going to have something, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that's, those are your options. If, if you have animals running around loose, you have a fence. Maybe you have a double fence, depending upon the animal. We'll talk more. <laughs> or you, or you have a building. These critters are way over my head. <laughs> Only ones that fly. Yeah. But why, why can't the setback for the building and the pasture be different? Uh, I'm sorry. Why? Why can't the setback for uh, any kind of structure be different from the pasturing? I think maybe because of Tom's point. In the R R R In R one about having you know fifty oh, cur I, I fifty agree. curious cows lined up watching him in his pool. That's why it should be from res it should be from the residents and living areas and not necessarily from property mm -hmm. Which I think is what I was suggesting. Yeah. That's yes. what's in here. It doesn't say it, but no. No wonder we're confused. What, what, what is yeah. just discussed? What is, the whole concept was from a budding residences. Yeah, residential. The whole concept homes. was residents. It right. didn't talk about property residents. It talked about the residents. That's what it's talking about. And that's that's the issue. Because that's that's what's being in there. Yeah, I mean, if you're on a a large acre lot right. in the R1 or R2, and it's you don't have much around it, you've got more ability to use utilize your space than somebody that's trying to come in and, and squeeze a commercial facility in an existing residential area. And I think that's ultimately what we're trying to limit when we look at these, not necessarily the, the big... You know the 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 R1 lot that looks like it's R4. We're trying to deal with the R1 lot that's in the middle of an R1 or R2 area. Right. Then, then make it make make the setback 100 feet from the from the nearest abutting property, other than your own. Because if you want the cows in your backyard, 10 feet from your house. So, so from the property or from from residents. Right. So, and that's what I would make it 100 feet. But, but is R1 different from? I'm sorry. Absolutely. So the R1 needs to. Be, uh, that makes sense to me. R1, but R3. But we can, well, we're we not can touching them. We're talking about well, just R1 right, right now. now. <laughs> okay, I, I missed that so, part. So I, I but we don't have to touch them all to pass this because. I I know, but right now we're just discussing <laughs> one. We have to do one and. So I think in, in the R1, if we said you have to be 100 feet from the abutting property. Residence. The abutting residence, residence. I'm sorry. The abutting residence, if you meet that standard, okay. I'm okay with that. The animal yeah. husbandry activities need to be. Yes, yes. Not agriculture. Whatever those are. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. So, so if you can demonstrate you're asking, your property if you're ending, if you're is, is more to, than 100 feet, you know, to the net, the neighbor's house, and then you've got everything up to your property. I'm not, I'm not arguing the distance. Yeah. I'm just saying the language here. Is right. It needs really to be clear. Right. It's it's right. It needs to be clear. So can I can well, I ask concept, can I ask a question? I main one. Okay. We're not talking about acres right now. We're talking about setbacks. Are we really supposed to have this first line? No. I don't. I think that's. A, Right, that's supposed to go away. So it's supposed to be minimum setback from budding residential homes, agriculture activities 50 feet. Yeah, we'll just get rid of that. Why is that? that's, that's not, not, that's that's not that's part that's of the discussion. That's supposed to be just an agriculture. Oh, we're not doing agriculture? No. We're going to no. do it on a different one? We're going to yeah. do it different next year. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have another question <laughs> on, on setbacks. What about the front setbacks? I'm arguing with. I'm fine with the 50 feet. That the, I'm arguing right with now. no setbacks. Yeah. Let them go yeah. right up to the. I would glad. Like but I don't think that makes, makes any difference because the setback right now is, is the house has to be set back 50 feet from the road. Right. You want to run your cows right up to the road? Go ahead. Okay, so there's no house there. However, yeah. okay. be aware if your cow wanders out into the road in front of well, my car, yeah. well, my lawyer will talk well, to you. I'll put a fence up. <laughs> but ultimately, <laughs> say we went with the 100. <laughs> yeah. 
from then, the front, and I'll drive you down. From, from a town. Okay, okay. Bring yeah. them to the hospital. And then then point to essentially, you've got 50 feet of the road. Front set back really on the, the across the road. <laughs> yeah, probably 50 feet of right away for the road or more. So that's... So you can't be clear. Right, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And there's 100 feet from your neighbors, whatever. Correct. All right. How are we going to define what counts there? Is it as the neighbors whatever? Is that, yeah. What what's the whatever? Does it right. include their patio, their pool, their yeah, bird, it should. their birdhouse? It should be. It does it include their garage, their shed? It should. Yeah. It, should. So. it should be the closest. I, I don't know how you. The yeah. closest, closest existing. Permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The closest existing. Outdoor living areas. Let's call it that. Yeah. 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 So That's right. Outdoor living areas. Right. I could house. claim that I take a little walk around. The, no, the, that would be a yeah, good, but that's not outdoor. Not necessarily outdoor. outdoor. Take a carrot yeah. with you for the <laughs> okay. for the neighbors. I, I think having a permanent um, area, like careful a pool, or, or well, I guess that could move too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you could also have you could also have a, well, a garden area that's your seclusion. Should that be included? That might be. Sure. Well, we have to be careful because. If someone doesn't want that use next door, they can they No, nope. and this is this is why I said this is this is why I said that this has to read from the, if you're gonna include the pool or a deck, it has to be existing. So somebody right. can't say they're gonna build this and I'm Is a rope swing existing? No, it would, somebody mentioned somebody mentioned permitting. And I think that word can be important because then it gets into, you know, a bona fide feature. Like a, mm -hmm. like a deck mm -hmm. should have a, a permit, yep. right? A swimming pool would have a permit. A pool would have a permit. Patio does no, they don't? No. Yes. Yes. no. No. Not above ground. Not above ground. Oh, okay. ground. Sorry. But then it, it wouldn't include more temporary or less permanent type things, such mm -hmm. as a... Such as a garden bench, you know. Sure, right. right. Garden, a formal garden, yeah. Mm, wow. Why not? That's a, that's an outdoor living room. Living a garden? So, so I, mean, I don't. I don't think that way. Right. 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 I guess I could say I live in my garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It could be, oh, it okay. could be okay. your gazebo or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. The gazebo right. I, I think but see, okay, the issue I have with the garden and stuff like that, and even with some of these other things, you shouldn't be putting some of these things that close to your lawn. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, if you can put a cow that close, I mean, like if you, 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 you can, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you can. Don't get, I, I didn't say it right. <laughs> <laughs> I, just went, I just went to Windows 10, so I I mean, it's oh, probably, I'm, in to get, I'm in ticket now. I think that's why the existing, when you said existing, right. makes the difference. That's the that key is, word. So I think what I, right. What I don't want to end up having somebody go through is that, say they have a piece of land, and their neighbor puts their garden right next to the lawn. I'm really not inclined to penalize this person another 25 feet over a garden. If it's a pool, a deck, something like that, yeah, it's a permanent structure. That I don't have an issue doing. A permanent and that's license. Where, that's where I, or, or I would pool. still go with a, an existing permitted type of use. How about an existing permanent use? What would be permanent? Well, I mean, if you, look, it's the L.A. here. I'm going to tell you that I can have an extremely expensive garden that sure. I've built. And I don't mean a vegetable garden. I mean a formal garden. And if you're that talented, put up a hedgerow. And you're going to put up a hedgerow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were talking about, I, mean, I guess, I guess I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of but it's you know, something that, that is you, you, know, right. you come to town. You come to town hall. Yeah. And somebody's looking to do a... You know, something next door, and you're not a big fan of it. Yeah. And you know, are they going to say, well, you know, I've got my, I've got my, you know, sixty dollar Lowe's bench that I threw out there, and that's my, that's my sanctuary that I love to go to. 
and it's going to be right on the property line, and they're going to say, no, this is my permanent, you know, permanent spot that I'm going to keep everything 100 feet from. And it's just a means of, you know, of moving something farther away. Or are we going to be able to say as a town that, no, you know, this is what we've decided are, are bona fide living spaces that, you know, we've recognized a pool or a deck or a patio or something along those lines to say, okay, this is where we drew the line to say that's what we've got a town record of, you know, they went and got a building permit, they've done all of what they're supposed to have done, and that's where we're going to count the setback from. Yeah. And, that, and that's where I would, I that's think my point. If we could we put a list together, basically, well, very simple list. Yeah, well, I, I what think. What would be involved? They have to remember, though, yeah. that, that we're talking R1. So his, 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 what I would say, I, I love my property mostly because of the garden I have. Garden. And when I'm out there, that's my space. I'm outdoors. I'm 10 feet from the property line. And that's an important to me because a deck or a pattern. So that could be, you can't, you can't dismiss that. Right, but and in this I, area, it's This is R1 we're feet. talking about. But and to have a commercial, a commercial, a uh, commercial, Use right next to my garden. That doesn't seem fair because it's R1. I'm not. I'm not in R1, but but it, it, R1 is is supposed to be dense, and people bought there knowing this will be set up. And for a commercial property, I think they really want to move in to be 25 more feet back. I think it's reasonable. Whatever that. Is. But I think that's 50. 50 feet. But I, I tend to agree with you. The fact that you've got your garden there, if you can demonstrate that your garden was there, then you probably have a, a legitimate do that, though. That's, that's Google Earth. Oh. I would just go by property line. Google Earth will tell us whether or not something yeah. else is. You, you so update this just about every three years. Property line would be the easiest way to do it. it would be. And it would, it would eliminate any of the discussion about anything else. In the R1. In the R1. Yeah. Would that accomplish the same thing, Donner? Well, no. Oh, yeah, because we went 50. Isn't it 100 because it's 50 and 50? No, it's 25 and 75. It would be 25 and 75, yeah. From the property line, would be the easiest way to do it. Because then you don't have to deal with, well, what about this and what about that? What about the shade garden that I want to put in on the leaf before oak trees that I have? Okay, so, so we, take the, we take the worst case scenario, and that is, is that the house is 25 feet from the lawn. And then you say that the, the animals and, and any other building have, have to be, to be 75, 75 feet, feet from the property line. Actually, the ideal solution is that the gardener negotiates with the husbandry people for manure. Yes. And then I will not complain about the fact that I will to my garden. <laughs> Neighbors work things out. But yeah, the, I, I think just from the property line is the easiest yeah. solution. All right. So, so how, do you, how do you guys feel about 75 feet from the property line? So we've just spent three quarters of an hour coming full coming circle. Coming in circle. Yeah. Yeah. I still object for the same reason. That you, you, you're on a property line um, of the woods. Yeah. Now you have yeah. to be 75 feet away from that property line. Or, or a property line along the road. you got to be 75 feet away. The question becomes, who, who are we going to put the heaviest weight on here? The the, be on, the commercial. on the commercial people moving in yeah. for the new operation, or on the resident who was already there. No, in the R1. And the R1. Okay. Yeah. So the residential went up because that's what that's supposed to be. So 75 feet for the R1 from the property line. Now we're talking side yard, side and back, not the front, right? Side the back, not the front, side and back. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think it should be from a, from a feature. But I, I and while in, in I, I, I agree in some respects, but I think in regards to trying to make sure that this gets adhered to, and you don't want people moving features or claiming a bench or nothing against gardens on my own. Gardens. I think that when you do it from the property line, I think it's probably the fairest way to do it because then you're affecting them and their property and you're not affecting the other person. So 
but it can be as far away or as close as to their line as they can be per the permit. But the new person who wants to do the new business has to adhere to this. But it's yeah. not moving. You're not you're not using a deck or a pool or a garden. You're using this is where the line yeah. is and I think so with that piece right there. No, I mean, it's, it's too much, especially in a in a situation where you you don't have anything near you on the other side. Right. I think it depends on the context, which I think then instead of just an arbitrary property line, you deal with the feature because that takes in to account what's near you. Because if you're putting up a structure, it would still have to meet the right. But it would still have the, the setback structure. So talking, but if if yeah. you're you're abutting woodland or another farm by chance on on the oh, other yeah, side. There is that. Then why, why have a setback, an arbitrary setback from that? Yeah. Make it a waivable criteria. That, yes. Conditional use. But yeah. then we end up with a complicated mess. Because if somebody has a big lot next to you, they decide to sell the lot next to you, and that person puts a house up 25 feet from the line. Well, that's well, the problem. That, that's their problem. Yeah, that's our yeah. yeah. problem. Yeah. 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 It's whoever's there yeah. first who gets, you know, right. gets to set the rules. Tell the, tell the gun ranges that have been closed down now. Well, <laughs> that's not how it works. Agriculture, the Department of Agriculture regulates basically industrial animal production, piggeries chicken houses and so forth, and they have much stronger and much farther, they have mu much more stringent setbacks from, from property lines than anything we're doing here. Well, the issue here seems to basically be pastured, pastured animals. animals. Yeah. Right. It, it's not, uh, yeah. I don't think the building is an issue. Well, if you can be 25 feet from the side line with a, with a piggery, that's an issue. It's a huge issue. Okay, and if that's the, if that's the case, and there are much much stricter guidelines for those types of operations, are we going to be able to incorporate this into this so that if somebody wants to open up one of those, they have to follow those rules and not these? They, they will usually have to do that in best management. Practice. No, I don't want. I don't. Right, so that's, what, what, that's they not would, something they would, we need to worry would, about. From a setback point of view, they they end up well, following the stricter of the two. Okay. Right. In that situation. So we're still back to worrying about the, the cows and Tom's garden, which he has to have on his property line for some reason. Tom's example is is he's got That's one point zero one acre lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what James said because we, we had uh, yeah. a, a, an applicant uh, commercial use needed in a very wooded area of town. Mm -hmm. And had to, it was required to have, what was it, 75 feet of undisturbed land, meaning trees that had to be grown there. It was, no, he was deep in the woods. And we haven't been able to give him a permit until he grew 75 feet of trees in the woods. So, and that's what you're talking yeah, about. Exactly. He's not disturbing anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and, but I'm thinking of. Yeah, R1. Well, the, uh, well, R1. Someone was some already in the R1, already yes. there. Yes. And then, so I'm looking at, at the current uh, property in, in the R1. R3 might be a whole different situation, but R1 is hard. It is hard. It is hard. It's hard. hard. It's hard. It's hard. And we, we only, it, I don't know how many properties there are all together we're even talking about. Well, not many. I mean, not many. We really don't. And, and I keep just in, in well, looking at this, you know, we almost got. Why would we do 75? Why would we just do 50 and double their setback? Well, okay. in our one along new road, that's, that's a, a whole different ballgame than the R run along Limerick Road. And it's, you know, depending on where you envision, so is the standard is different. A lot also depends upon the shape of the lot. Sure. I mean, you know, if you have a nice square, five-acre lot, that's one thing, but if you've got something long and narrow, and you've got 75 feet of setback on either side, you, you know, you can raise snakes one at a time. <laughs> well, it may not be suitable. Not all land is suitable right. for all uses. Right. So. You know, and that, that's the thing. You know, 
don't have, frankly speaking, that many good coastals of land. See, and I would have been comfortable with 50 because you'd have to have 25 feet from the line to put your house. So if you're doubling it from twice from the line, I think that should have been enough. Three times from the line is, to me, is a bit much. Yeah. Well, you well, mentioned the waiver idea. All right. Is there a way to, to, to write this so it's both legal and flexible? Sure. Leave it to the planning board to make it a, a case by case decision. We can do that. We want to give them that. Oh, what, that with what standards? With what standards? You can say use a standard that can that. be waived for, under these circumstances. You need circumstances. Yeah, right. You you need need circumstances. We could you have, have a circumstance. You can't say, I, I want a waiver. No. We, uh, and no, we tell no, people no all the time. You could good. have a circumstance that says, provided you want to waive the setback, well, then. Then the house on the other side has got to be 500 feet away, and, and if they're 500 feet away, you can ask to have the setback waived, and that then it would be up to the planning board as to whether or not we agree. The only thing is you need objective standards. That's right. Yep. And we have a DV1 is a good example. We have that in there where certain things can be waived yeah. if these circumstances apply. Right. We can do the well, same so thing I, here. I think it's a way around it. It, it is, is the way around it. Really, I mean, it does give the planning board some flexibility. It doesn't make things absolutely rigid that because we're not going to find the perfect solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Even right. Change differences differences in, in configuration of lots, what's there, what is going to be there, types of if, animals. If they're yes, not disturbing they're anybody, we really don't care yeah. pretty much where, right. where they are. Yeah, there's too many variables to come yeah, up with a number that, that works. works. Yeah. Right. So if you if you allow the planning board to look at that and say yes, we're we're going to be able to waive that criteria because you meet certain sets of circumstances, mm -hmm. as Tom was saying, and we can define what those circumstances are. Yeah, and particularly, I mean, we're talking pretty much the setback. Yeah. So we're you know, if yeah. if your near if the nearest abutter is a hundred feet away, do we want right. do we waive the setback? Okay. We okay. could we could not. That's what you're doing. It depends on which way the wind is blowing and the neighbor. No, that's not going to make Tom happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I would. So the, the, I'm going to go back to Donna's question. Donna thinks that. Uh, Diane, yeah, should, yeah, I'm Donna. sorry. Yeah. I, I told you you should have said over here. <laughs> <laughs> Diane thinks that it should that 75 is too much and it should be 50. Because that's double what your normal setback for your house would be. What do you guys think? For an activity. Do you want to do 50 or do you want to do the 75 and then let the planning board go? From do? 75 and let the planning board go. From the property line? Yeah. Still? Right. Yeah. Still. Okay. okay. Because I think, I think you have to be 25 feet in this area to build a house or to put up any, you could put up a garage, you could put up all kinds of things. So that's why I was thinking 75 is a bit much. So, okay, you want to put animals, so you double it. So you give them, you give them what would normally have been the buffer from the house 25 feet next to you, and you back it up 25 feet the other way. So you're, you're saying 50 feet then from the property line. Right. right. Okay. Instead so of 75. I'm, so I'm, now I'm, you've doubled how what you would normally, under normal circumstances, have to meet to put something on that property. Yeah, I might think of that in the R2 or the R3, but I think in the R1, 75 is a good spot, a good starting point because it's the R1. I'm, I'm, I guess I, I, I think I, 50 is a good, yeah, okay. would be a good, but I mean, you take if we've got to go from the property. Just again, talking about the alpacas, I mean, they're more like, it's commercial, but really when you see her, if you see the animals and everything, they're more like pets, and, you know, you know the thing is, I, I don't think it'd be an issue as far as, uh, you know, if you have animals that you really care about, you know, you know what I, mean? I don't know, I think, um, Glenn, I would ask, I would ask to Dot. What if they were billy goats? Don't get started on billy goats. <laughs> if, if they're billy goats, a thousand feet is not quite enough. Uh, you can have them a thousand feet from the guy two blocks right. down. And and you know the problem that I have is is I I feel for that situation because the problem I can't do is I can't I can't penalize every single person the one, one person who has bad right. animal yeah, husbandry. Right. So and what, I, what I'm trying thing. to do is I'm trying to be fair to both the neighbor mm -hmm. and the property. Mm -hmm. And that is, I don't want them right on the neighbor's line. And 
and I want them to be able to enjoy their property. So I figure, okay, normally 25 feet would be where you could put a house, a dwelling, a pool, a deck, any of those kind of things. So if you did 50, then you've doubled the amount that you'd need from that line. And I think that even in that area, that would be enough. And it should be enough. If it, if it isn't, and somebody thinks that it's an issue, the neighbors are going to be there to complain. Okay, so let's find out. Sim, 50 or 75? We got the property line or? Property line. So it's 50. 50. Tom? I really don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see a figure. 50, I want to get a number. 50 if there's, if there's um, a use right there, but a way to waive that if there's just right. warts. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's. Yeah. Yeah. I you agree? agree? 50, yeah. yeah. Jamie, you agree? 50, mm -hmm. 50 Charlie? Okay, there we go. Whoa, oh, that was so God. easy. <laughs> oh my gosh. But that was easy. It took us an hour. Ago. Easy. <laughs> no, it took us three years. <laughs> okay, good. So that's the option of a waiver. That's yeah, the right? That's essentially yes. what everybody's agreeing and on. And you have the potential yes. for a waiver. Okay. There we go. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, we're 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 not not depending on who's here. <laughs> I'm going to solve that problem really quickly. All those in favor of the 50 feet. It's unanimous. Okay, that, that issue is dead. We're not bringing it back. R1. In the waiver. In the R1. In the R1. Right. We only did R1. We all, we did, all we did was R1. We've made some progress. And what about wells? Um, we should have. Department of Ag will regulate. They will. Okay, yeah. that's all. Okay. Yeah. Now, right now, we're only doing this section, right? But I'm sure the department will regulate that, to be honest. Because we did change the rule. I don't think it's under the, the, under the understanding that they would. I think, I think it would be a good idea to have that language What's in there. That? Mm -hmm. I don't think the uh, Department of Ag will regulate that. Wells on adjacent properties. Is there any way to find out so no. that if they don't? No, I don't think they'll regulate. So if you look at the best management practices, it speaks in general terms, not specific. I thought, I thought he said the other day that they said it was 75 feet on their property, though, right? Is that what he said? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was on his property. Yeah, uh, yeah I believe it was 75 feet. That's what they said. Yeah, that's, Is there that's, any regulation for abutting? Property, no, I mean, like, say, you had an abutter that had their well right well, I don't think why it would be any different for him. Okay. So it's whether it's yours or your neighbor's. Yeah. Okay. Seventy-five feet. Seventy-five feet. Mm -hmm. That's pasture, not anything else. That was strictly pasture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that takes care of our one. Other than yeah. the acreage. We have to set that. <laughs> right. The minimum pasture grazing area. I don't even know what that is. The, well, that's the no, problem is if you have a 10 acre lot and you have one acre cleared, then mm -hmm. you can put all your animals in there on that one acre. You, you're yeah. going to have to clear yeah. four yeah. acres. You need more water. From having a, unless you're doing intensive agriculture, if you're doing industrial agriculture. Yeah. I think yeah. industrial yeah. agriculture. Yeah. 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 That should just be part of the project. Yeah. 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 The application process. Yeah. Wouldn't that be Because it right. depends. Yeah, yeah. because they could, be, they could be. They could be housed and be fed from the outside, or they could be grazed. I don't want to. Or it could be a combination there. Yes. Yeah. A combination. Yeah. Of all. I don't know that. Right. Yeah. Does, it, does it matter to us? Wouldn't it be up to them or best practice? Yeah. Best yeah. management practice? Yeah, I'm going to have to bring in the best management practice. Yeah, we'll you guys to take a look at it. Yeah. 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 It's, like, it's like soil yeah. erosion. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can you email it to us ahead of time? Sure, I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> Should we have a ream of paper available for printing it out? <coughs> oh, no, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> 150 you'll, you'll pages worth of right. so, USDA uh, and then to it. I have to ask, even with best practices, do we need to set the pasture area or does the best practices set? Because not believe. everybody follows best practices. No, they right? don't. Well, that's, that's one of the issues. But for commercial, they are going to have to, aren't they? We're going to say they have to. Whether agriculture says they have to is not. Yes, but we can say in our regulations that they have to. Absolutely. Yep. And if Absolutely. they don't, then we want to say. Based on common sense, 
do what they want oh, until there's a complaint, right. mm -hmm. and then the best management practices come up and you have to adhere to those. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. You yeah. You've done this, you haven't done this. But right. I, I, yeah. think the, I think the best way to handle the grazing area and stuff like that is to say they have to follow best practices. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to see whether or not best practices actually addresses the grazing area. And if they do, let best practices take. What do you mean by that exactly? It's like the minimum grazing area. You say that if I have five cows. No, we're saying if you have ten acres of, of land, yeah. five of those acres, if you are grazing the animals in the pasture, you have to have a five acre pasture. Fifty percent of that lot has to be pastured. Why? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just because, because that's the number that it says. It's well, just it was, it's, it's exactly <laughs> I'm, just, I'm wondering why you guys came up with like why that matters. I don't know if it does to me. Yeah. 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 She actually, that, that, that 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 she matter. Matter. Well, but why are we looking at this? Then this is a garbage out. piece of. I don't want I don't want to get into things I think they need to follow best practices and I don't want to dictate how much they have to have for grazing. Then we could we could take that air that out and if and if we have a statement that says you have to follow best practices, that'll address the issue. And adequate, you know, grazing based on some Standard, whatever that standard is. No, 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 no. I mean, you gotta, you gotta find a standard and go with it. Whether it's, you know, a USDA standard for, you know, whatever. That that is what we'd have to do if we're gonna, if we're gonna dictate it at all. And Would I hate to say, it, but I just don't envision people having animals if they don't have a way to feed them. Well, you can um, buy because yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can yeah. buy feed, then we don't need to set a grazing area. land in the rundle, they're going to have to buy feed. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. It's a so. short season. Yeah, I think that, you know, Jim, I, I have a word to, to solve Jamie's dilemma. What's that? Jamie? Suitable yeah. pasture area. Right. Yeah. And, and that was that, that, one, one point I wanted to make because someone might have over 400 acres and there's only 30 acres of pasturage and 370 of acres of wetland. No, 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 much. Um, the, the, the other other point I wanted to make is I understand the best management practices falling back on that, but it's, it seems to me that protecting drinking water is something that might be worth saying the greater of 100 feet or whatever best management practices I think say it, I think it's from, from on any. the back of this. That's when we get there. Under the performance standards, number D, excuse me, letter D. Okay, but I, I, I just, the, 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 I, just, I put that, and, and that, that's good, I just wanted to say that I, I understand falling back on best management practices for, for everything else, but it seems to me when it comes to drinking water. So, can, we, we so really is there any way to put adequate pasture grazing? Suitable. 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 Yeah. 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 Without yeah. setting a yeah. without setting a percentage. Right. Yeah. Suitable. 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 Is that under performance? Is that going to be under performance standards? Well, you put it up here. Yeah, you could put it up. I mean, if it's, it's, if it's not going to change from zone to zone, you know, if that's the standard we're going to apply, take it out of the table. Just yeah. make yeah. it a blank yeah. performance standard. So we, are we keeping suitable grazing? No. So we're going to take it out of, and put it into the performance yeah. standards, standards so it won't be in the okay. table at all. Yeah. It'll be G at the back. We could get that far. Give it enough time, and we can. We can. Okay. So that. Can we have that enough? The, the next discussion in R one is the acres. What are we looking at from an acreage point of view? In in the R one, I know only in R one for commercial animal husbandry. I will tell you, the smallest existing animal husbandry we've got is 10 acres right now. Is it? 
Is that uh, yes. Panorama? I thought yes. she had 14 weeks. She, so has, 10. she has 10. She has 10? Okay. She's not, she not on all the time. No. No, she's not. Yeah. So she's been in the Well, we're talking just animal husbandry. We're not talking agriculture. No, we're just talking animal, just husbandry. animal husbandry. But and that's why that's why I said that. You know, it's that's where I'm torn because she could raise her animals on less than ten acres. And you could put something that's raised entirely in housing on a lot, a lot less than ten acres. I, I, I'm. Almost have to say, say not to do a minimum parcel size, but I know we can't get away with that. We're going to have some sort of trigger. Yep. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I could live with five. I mean, it, practicality is going to determine what you can and yeah. cannot do, regardless of the acreage we set. Mm -hmm. If you say you have to have at least five acres, and somebody wants to come in with, you know, a, a, a commercial farming operation that requires a lot of acreage. They can't do it on five. It's just impossible. And, and in some cases, they wouldn't be able to do it on ten. So that, and the, the, the nature of the operation will be the limiting factor for what goes in on that lot. So the only reason for setting a minimum, to my way of thinking, is again to protect the neighbors that are already there. Which is why I think the ten acres is in the R1 is a good, a good start. But again, if, if all you were going to put on the five acre lot was a you know a 50 by 100 foot barn? Yep. I still say a 10 acre lot. Why? Because we need to have a standard in the R1. It is primarily supposed to be a densely urban area. Right, and, and at I five think acres is five times the size. It doesn't matter. I think if, if you're supposed to have a densely urban area and that is supposed to be the residential growth zone, then if you want to use it for something else, you need to have a bigger, substantially bigger lot. Then I want you to come out to my area and stop them from building houses mm -hmm. and tell them to go build in the residential area. They are. We're almost, yeah, we're almost tapped out on New Road right now. We're tapped out on Liberty. We've got um, more splits going up on Schwecker. Um, campground Road, I'm building more splits. We don't have subdivisions. Splits. That's why I don't see it. That's why I don't see it. It's all land splits. And it's happening. Pretty, pretty impressive. Five acres. Can we, are we still discussing it? You actually have her put down two things that we've concluded today. And that's what. Can I, I, I think, I just think, I think five acres is five times the normal acreage in that area. And I think that a lot of the, a lot of the standards, <coughs> the waters, the setbacks, um, what they want to do is going to dictate what they can or can't do on that five acres. So if we go to the R2 and the R3, can we then say we need to have We're not five talking about them yet. But I'm going to... We can't talk about them Yes, we can. Are we, going to, are we going to say that those areas have to have five times as much land? <coughs> and well, no. I, well, I, would, I would say no. That's a mistake. I would say in the R2 or the R3, I think what Diane, five acres... I think what Diane's yeah. saying is that five acres is a considerable increase from the minimum lot size. Yeah, but that minimum lot size is for a small for a house. Yeah. And we're talking yeah. about a commercial we're talking about a commercial farming operation that includes a number of other uses. If yes, you go and, down here. Right, and I understand that. But if they're gonna have to go in front of the board, they're gonna have to meet all these standards and if they can't what well they, their standard is that I can I can I can have I can have agri agritourism lodging facility. I can have veterinarian offices. Well, that's I can have what a I barrier. Well, I can have air here rise. And we start looking at some of the stuff that you can do with a commercial animal husbandry operation. In the and we start, we're saying five acres? I'm not sure w why half of those are there. But and to be because quite we honest, talked about agritourism. Do, do you think that some of these things are really going to bother their neighbors that sure. much? The poor neighbors. Mm -hmm. There'd be a lot of traffic. We talked about all that. In the R1, I do think it would. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, some of yeah. some of those things are ridiculous for R1. Yeah. Well, yeah. they aren't if you have enough land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you have enough land, that is smart. If you have hay rides, hoist it by your own guitar. 
Because you have enough land. Yes, but I, I would think those same standards would apply to this. Because you're going to have the same disturbance with traffic, regardless of what you're doing on the property. Which is why uh, another reason I think 10 acres would be good. I, I, I might look at it and say in the R2 or the R3, a smaller amount of land would be would be okay. You could do the five acres, and I think that that might be acceptable. When I talk about the resi the primary residential districts, I think we need to make the standards stricter than we do in other areas. Because we want, we don't, let's be honest, do we want commercial activity in the R1? I think we want residential activity in the R1 and not commercial. You definitely know. Oh, yeah, you, you definitely know. No, you know how it feels on that one. You're in the R1. <laughs> Those are rhetorical questions. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, you, if you guys say five acres, I'll live with the five acres. I happen to think 10 is a better number in the R1. That's me. Square you. So I was just going to say 7.5. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, well, I think some of these <laughs> permitted uses, if you're, if you're dealing with this as an R1, just R1, some of these permitted uses don't make sense in no. R1. You're not going to have a petting zoo in R1. You're not going to have, you well, know. Well, okay, okay, you're you're right. looking at this overlay district. That's yeah. not what we're talking about. I know this it is. is. I know it is. Worthless. Oh, yeah, this doesn't really pertain to it. I know. That's why the paper is this. You can't look at all the pieces. We have to just look at one piece at a time. So just look at one piece at a time. Well, I mean, yeah, let's, let's remember that. Yeah, this is a, just a condition. And we can go back and adjust the other pieces, but first we have to get past this grid. At least, at least our one piece of the grid. Why don't we, what are we going to do for I'm the minimum say, Why don't we go around the table as 10 versus 5 acres? We're taking out 7.5. Tandley, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Do you have a rough sense of the lot, like the distribution of lot sizes <coughs> in the R1? Yeah. I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, we if we look at, at 5 versus 10, are we talking about three lots, or are there a huge amount of, of parcels in town that are within that stretch? Or, you know, are in we looking... R1. Yeah. yeah. In the R1. Are there a lot, there are a couple of, there are some large <coughs> parcels. So greater than ten. I don't care about the greater than ten because that's that's okay, above that's, that's, that's okay. above so the a threshold lot of anyway. Acre ones, um, they're disappearing fast. They're all getting cut up for for house lots right now. Um, Mark's got a huge piece. Um, there's there is Swecker. There's Burt Calgills, but most of his is <coughs> swamp. Um, we've got some some more of. The Drew property in the back. That's that's our four. Excuse me. That's I'm just gonna say that's yes. all our four. Well, the what? west. You get the west farm. The yeah, I got the west farm. That's about it. That, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a big one. And then I've got well, it's Kaczynski's pit, but I don't think that's a good farm there. Um, uh, but you're not talking farm. You're talking. Yeah, no, but, no, but, no, but, no, but no. even that. I mean, it's all ledge yeah. now. What <laughs> 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 is now? When, when we looked at the map a few years ago, the last permutation of the Trump yeah. plan, there were, in R1, there were 32 lots, 10 acres or more. That, right. That number had gone down because lots had been split. So split. Yeah. Right. But I think the question is how many five-acre right. lots? Five-acre lots I don't have an answer to. We didn't look at that. I almost feel that would be helpful on, on me making this yeah, decision. Yeah, no. we, could, we can have that discussion at the start of the next meeting yeah. and, and come up with a number. Acre lots versus ten acre lots. Yeah, what's in that? What's in that size? How many are we really thinking yeah. of? Yeah, because we may we you may know. be talking about three lots. Right. right. Yeah, we're only talking about three lots, and mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and I guess what's throwing me is if we're not dealing with this paper, what are we dealing right. with? Because this is all over the place. Well, I mean, we're, we're looking I think at stuff from here and stuff that's not here, and and it's like. So what are we? I think the only thing yeah. I'm concentrating right now is just this little section. Right. I agree. The standard. I like the standards better than I like the front of it. I don't like. Right. Right now, Sim, we're just dealing with the table. 
and we'll, we'll end up looking at the standards afterwards. But you're right, there's other stuff on I mean, here. Some of the stuff doesn't apply to like yeah. our yeah. But one of the things that we have to remember, because this is the animal husbandry, we're going to have this table. The things that are, that are listed down here may apply in the R2 or the R3, but they're all going to be part of that ordinance. But I think this is a combination of agriculture and yes. animal husbandry. Yes. 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 We said we were going to split them up. Right. So it was written for a separate district, so it will change it by the next meeting, okay? <laughs> Please, stop speeding it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a well, it's, it's been, a, it's been gelded, it's you know? Do we try to do two? Do what? Two decisions? Uh, two? Well, in terms of the <laughs> yes, we have in terms of the <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 What do we do with setbacks in the R2? Are we really doing that now? I don't, I don't think we have enough time. We, have well, three minutes before well, we, have we can either do it really quickly or we know it's going to take two hours. Okay. We've hatched out the logic, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Same, I'd say I, we, we... I agree with you. Let's we, go for it. I'd say the 50 feet is like our one. I can live with that. I can live with that. I can live with it, too. Yeah. Me, too. Same waiver option. Yeah. Same, same yeah. waiver option. Yeah. Yeah. And what about our three? This is... Uh, Which is our last property, property line. <laughs> yeah, property lines. Okay. That that like sure well, well, actually, one of the things we, we'll I know yes. we have to deal with R3 as a separate entity, but as we make these decisions, in the comp plan, we made the suggestion that R3 be rolled into R2 because yeah. they're all two, late, two acre lots. There was no discernible right. difference. Then in that case, so, make it the, make right. it the, right. the same. Yeah. So that if we do that, then it's we already got, that. We got a whole line. So we have the setbacks all yeah. the so time. If, if we went over the things, there was very little difference between R1 and R, I mean R2 and R3. Right. It was, it was better to have R1. Yeah. Our two and have them all be the same. Rural conservation. Our one and okay, our so two. Okay, so really quickly. At some point, maybe our three will be our two, and they'll all be the same. Yeah. Can we make the same adjustment to rural three. conservation? Maybe fifty feet. No, not no. Rural what, 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 I just thought I'd ask it. No, we, <laughs> I, we, I thought maybe we'd really get lucky. <laughs> no. Nobody's that lucky, Rich. <laughs> so our three will be the same as our one and our two. And everybody in favor of that. Yeah, everybody in the country. I'm just, you know, no, right. yeah. why, why don't we just do it for the way to make sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Everybody says, you want to call the chance of the house. Let's make a few decisions. Everybody in favor of R2 and R3 being the 50 feet for the setbacks. R2 and R3, the 50 foot setback. With the waiver option. Yeah, with the waiver option. Okay, good. <laughs> and we'll deal with the RC. We'll deal with the RC the next time, and we'll be. Pat will give us a an overview of the R1. And give us, us a give five us a, acre. Right, and give us a new one of this with the agriculture pieces out.